And just like Lord Achuta is the supreme among deities, and Lord Shiva is the greatest of all Vaishnavas, so in the same way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all uh, scriptures. This is uh, how it is uh, described. And uh, I don't know about you, but we have purchased a golden throne from the internet. And uh, we have the Bhagavatam uh, wrapped in golden paper. And tomorrow, uh, actually, the person whom we wanted to give the Bhagavatam was going to come today here uh, to our ashram. But he will come tomorrow, so then we will give him a gift. Uh, let us say, today I will give this in my mind, and tomorrow he will receive it. <laughs> uh, I think this is a good for all devotees to, uh, to do. Let us hear some more of the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam, which will give pleasure to your heart. I think you all know the narration from the Padma Purana, that uh, once uh, Narada Muni came to the banks of the Yamuna in Brindavan, and there he saw a most shocking scene. There was a beautiful, beautiful lady um, crying petitiously on the banks of the Yamuna. There were many other servants of this lady there. She was a royal lady. And when Narada Muni came closer to look why she was crying, the, she, he saw that uh, there were mm, two men lying in the sand of the Yamuna just about to die. When he asked what is going on, he was informed that this lady is Bhakti Devi, uh, whose two sons, knowledge and uh, detachment, um, that is Jnana and Vairagya, were so weakened because it, is, it was the age of Kali, that, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, that the, they were dying now. Imagine to see a woman whose two sons are dying before her eyes. Uh, I think uh, Leka Sharavanti is uh, a mother and she knows how worried she is as a mother uh, that her boy, her son, will have only the best circumstances in uh, his life. And when there is a little threat to her son, then uh, uh, the mother will come and try everything to protect her son. Now Bhakti Devi could not save her two sons from dying and she was really crying. She was really in a very, very, very desperate situation. So Narada Muni thought, what should we do? And this is a long, long explanation, but in the end he recited, he first tried to recite various hymns, various mantras, various wisdom scriptures, but the two uh, men continued to <sighs> just breathe in short gasping breaths because they were dying. And finally he recited the Srimad Bhagavatam. And as they heard the Srimad Bhagavatam, wow, they came back to to life. Mm. 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 There is, uh, this is very nice, uh, uh, just by hearing the words of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Padma Purana says, Bhakti Jnana and Vairagya are nourished. Mm. This will relieve the misery of Jnana and Vairagya and will make Bhakti blissful. It means when you hear, my dear devotees, the immortal nectar of the Bhagavatam, your knowledge will receive new strengths and also your ability to detach yourself from Maya will become strong. Jnana and Vairagya. This is such a problem for us in Kali Yuga. We always 
lose our vision, what should be done, what should not be done. For that, listen to the Bhagavatam, which has risen like a blazing sun on the sky of Kali Yuga to give your knowledge new perspectives, new understandings, new strengths. And also, we all have this problem. We know what is right to do, but we are so attached to the wrong thing that uh, <laughs> we, are, we are falling victim to it. I knew we have gotten some cream cheese. So, uh, 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 Krishna uh, uh, Pasadam, uh, we have gotten cream cheese. I don't know if you know what is this cake. It is a very powerful cake. And because we are vegans in our little ashram, we got a vegan cheesecake. Cheesecake is the word. Uh, uh, so uh, one, one cream cheese or cheesecake is very good. But if you take two or three, oh, you cannot sleep in the night. So we were eating the good cheesecake uh, and uh, then one of us on the table said, I know I shouldn't take a second one, but I will take a second one because I'm too attached, too attached. This is a, this is a I asked him, in the, uh, how are you doing? He said, I, I took too much cream cheese, or oh, what is it called, cheesecake, uh, the next morning, and uh, he had suffered in the night. We know about this. We know we shouldn't do it. We know we shouldn't think so negatively. Um, this is a very big thing I see in uh, our members who want to become devotees. They are overcome by a negative mindset and they think of this negative thoughts. We know it's not good for us, but because we are so attached, we do uh, the same thing which harms us. When you hear the Bhagavata, your Vairagya, your detachment will be born and you will be able to say no thank you to all the things which are harmful on your spiritual journey. Uh, this is uh, described in the Padma Purana. It is said, when, when a lion roars, wolves flee in fear. So merely by the sound of Srimad Bhagavatam, all the bad qualities of Kali Yuga are destroyed. Bhakti, the flow of love of God, along with Jnana and Vairagya, will enter every house and dance in the heart of every living being who hears the Srimad Bhagavatam or who reads the Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Krishna. <laughs> In the first canto of the Bhagavatam, we hear some more information how uh, the Bhagavatam is important to our sp for our spiritual life. We hear that the Bhagavatam is a pradinidi rupa of Krishna. That means a representation of Krishna. You know, when Krishna was present on the planet Earth for some time, but then uh, he decided to leave the planet Earth. Uh, it, it came about by his divine arrangement. It's a very interesting story. Actually, do you know after the battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna came to Gandhari, the mother of Duryodhana and his 99 brothers. And Gandhari said, O oh Krishna, I know that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I love only you. You are my all and everything. But by your arrangement, my 100 sons had to die in the dust of the battlefield of Kurukshetra. 
I know you are my Lord, but now I will curse you. And she took off the blindfold from her eyes and she said, I curse you, that just like all my sons have died, all the members of your dynasty will also die and you will leave the planet alone. Krishna smiled. You know, there was Gandhari, the mother. Just imagine these two extremes in her heart. One day, one, on one side, she said, Krishna, you are my Lord. You are my everything. But she could not uh, come to terms or come to a balanced understanding that it was the same Lord whom she worshipped who had brought all these warriors together on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, who had made them fight to the death and who was therefore the indirect cause of the death of all her sons. She was torn aside, so she, she cried and he said, you are my Lord, but I curse you. Krishna could understand this sentiment. He walked to Gandhidari, who was trembling and who was crying, and he took her and embraced her and said, Do not worry, this is also my plan. That I should be leaving the world. My time has come, and uh, and nothing moves beyond my plan. Are we not also sometimes like this? We are devotees of Krishna. We know Krishna is our Lord and Master. But we cannot always accept all the arrangements which he makes. And he, we argue sometimes with him. Why did you have to do this? Why did this thing happen in my life? Why was I misunderstood? Why? Uh, and so on and so forth. No, very very interesting but i wanted to say due to the curse of gandhari that is one one let me say apparent cause ein Aug, eine augenscheinliche ursache uh, krishna uh, left the planet but now as he was leaving the planet and he was just going out of the atmosphere of the world, he saw that someone else was entering the atmosphere of the world. And this person was not a good person. This person was the embodiment of all evil. It was the crafty, sly, clever, uh, Kali Yuga with all his bad machinations. Machinations means manipulations. Uh, and uh, Krishna looked back and thought, wow, people of the world will not be able to deal with Kali Yuga. It will not, they, they cannot do this. They are too weak. I must help them. Mm. Uh, I must help them so that uh, they can overcome the influence of Kali Yuga. And uh, then from him manifested a form, Pratinidhi Rupa, uh, uh, representative form of Krishna. And that was the Jainitai. Shriman Bhagavatam. Shriman Bhagavatam, yes, Hare Krishna. <laughs> you have a representative from Delhi, Janitai. So this is explained in the Bhagavatam itself. Krishna Svadam Upagate Dama Gyanadi Bisaha Kalonashta Drishamesha Puranakodunodita this Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen 
just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode. No? Just after Krishna had departed to his own abode, the Shima Bhagavatam came, accompanied by Dharma, by knowledge, by Ragya, and everything. And then the verse says, persons who have lost their vision due to the darkness of the age of Kali shall get light from this Srimad Bhagavat Purana. This is the beauty of the Bhagavatam. If you, if you go and read the Bhagavatam, uh, mm, 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 uh, then Bhakti Devi is given strength and Bhakti comes right into your house. Uh, when uh, uh, on that mm, beach of the Yamuna, mm, Narada Muni recited the Srimad Bhagavatam, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jnana and Vairagya, the two deadly uh, mortified or dying uh, sons of Bhakti, got their life again and became rejuvenated. Bhakti Devi was so uh, uh, grateful. She said, now Kali Yuga is coming. Please tell me, where should I reside? And uh, the... Mm, uh, uh, answer was Bhakti is established at a place where the Srimad Bhagavatam is recited. Uh, she, mm, 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 she always comes into the temple of the heart uh, where uh, uh, when someone recites this very sacred scripture, this wonderful scripture of the Bhagavatam. I have a very, very, very nice uh, book here in front of me uh, where uh, a few uh, 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 glories of the Bhagavatam uh, are described. Uh, Krishna says, I am personally present in that house where even half a verse is kept in <laughs> uh, kept. Uh, mm. Sometimes devotees ask me, how will we find the time, please, to regularly recite the Bhagavatam? It is not easy for us to, mm. to make time because we are very busy. Uh, but the Puranas, Padma Purana says, Recite every day one verse in your home of Bhagavatam. Then the house becomes a holy place, a place of pilgrimage. If you can't do that, recite even half a verse. And still, your home will become a place of a pilgrimage. Yesterday, uh, there was an interview uh, for the ISKCON education uh, about the Bhagavatam. And I was asked in the interview, how do we read the Bhagavatam as to make best use out of it? And I said, the most important is that you make it a regular habit to read. I want to really inspire all of you who listen today to this presentation to try to make it a regular habit to read the Bhagavatam. It's not so effective if you read sometimes and then you stop and then you read again after some time. It is more effective if you read even a small portion every single day because that will uh, expose your soul to the constant influence of the Bhagavatam and you will be constantly uh, 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 surcharged with, with transcendental knowledge. Uh, 
you should read the Bhagavatam regularly. You should invest some faith in the Bhagavatam. And finally, you should make some effort or some, yeah, to, to read. And this becomes very interesting. Uh, what should be the effort which you uh, uh, can, uh, can do? See, by now I think you all know when you do any activity in bhakti, your whole life influences this. For, I would like to give you an example. If you chant, for instance, the holy names of Krishna, but you had very bad relationships with devotees, you might, where you might have even done some offenses to devotees, then that influence, influences the quality of your chanting. Or uh, if you try to chant or read the Bhagavatam and you did just something the other day which was not in harmony with uh, the way you want to live your life in bhakti, you may have even broken some of the principles, then you see how also that influences your practice of devotional service. In other words, bhakti is not just a philosophy, it's a, a way of deep spiritual life. And when you do your bhakti, your whole life is there and tends to influence mm, the outcome of what it is. Uh, Prabhupada speaks uh, like this in the Bhagavatam. He says mm, mm, that the secret of hearing the Bhagavatam or reading the Bhagavatam is to be fully attentive, to uh, uh, read with rapt attention. And the German word for rapt attention would be gespannte Aufmerksamkeit. So, then he says, but uh, rapt attention cannot be given by someone whose mind is impure. Here you have it. When you live a life which mm, uh, contaminates your life, then, uh, no, sorry, if you live a life which, which does something to your mind and your heart which you don't want, then you cannot give rapt attention. No one can be pure in mind, Prabhupada says, whose actions are not pure. You need to have pure actions. And no one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if one hears from the right person, at the very beginning one can assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of the Shiva Bhagavatam. <laughs> I would like to tell you a little fictional story. There was a blind man. He came to a festival. The main attraction of the festival was that personality who was celebrated all over as the Lord of Dance. He was known as the best of dancers. He was celebrated as a very attractive person. And that festival where he came was a festival where one book was read. The book's name was the Srimad Bhagavatam. But the poor beggar did not listen to the words of the Bhagavatam. And therefore, 
he could not see the Lord of Deads. Everyone else was a blind man. Uh, everyone else was not able to see. But they, everyone else listened to the Srimad Bhagavatam and then their eyes were opened by the Bhagavatam. But our poor blind man went away uh, because he wanted he didn't want to see through the eyes of the Bhagavatam. He wanted to see through these defective eyes, which can never, never see the transcendental form of the Lord. My dear devotees, this is a parable, an analogy. Uh, we are all blind. Uh, blind people, we may see with our eyes, but we are spiritually blind. The eyes of the heart have not been opened. However, if we can make it a, a point to regularly read the Bhagavatam with attention, uh, and uh, in this way uh, uh, be in contact with that scripture uh, where Bhakti Devi is present, where Jnana is present, where Vairagya is present, then our eyes will be opened and we will be able to see the Lord uh, or feel His presence in our life. That is the blessing of the Bhagavatam. So if you have not yet taken full advantage of the Bhadra Purnima, you can take advantage in two ways. One is become a regular reader of the Bhagavatam. You, and the second is you can also give the Bhagavatam away. Uh, if you are interested to find out how you can give the Bhagavatam away, you can contact our Jai Gora Prabhu in Hamburg. He, as far as I heard, has sets of Bhagavatam in uh, the German language. Now you can contact the uh, Bhakti Vedanta, what is a library service in Belgium. They have English copies. You can make a present. Why not make a present to yourself? <laughs> That's a good plan. Uh, good plan. Everyone always in Kali Yuga thinks of himself the most. So today, Take that selfishness and give yourself the best present that is the Shema Bhagavatam. And if you have it, give yourself the second time the Shema Bhagavatam by making a firm intention to read daily in the Bhagavatam. That is what I wanted to say. I have looked at our time. I think my time is over. Jaini Tai, uh, am I correct? Maharaj, you have as much time as you would like to have, but I heard you're also busy, so I yes. <laughs> don't want to take more of your time. And we thank you very much for your um, enlightening us. And I think everybody who listened today got a lot of inspiration and a good understanding of the importance of the Srimad Bhagavatam and can uh, take this opportunity to stay to dedicate himself more to the Bhagavatam which is, yeah, as you explained, such important and such a uh, blissful and such an auspicious uh, book. Yes, thank you very much. Soli uh, Nis Sachinanda Maharaj Ki. Jai. Krishna. Thank you all very much. I wish you a lot of good uh, ideas for this program. I'm very happy um, and uh, uh, I will I'm just now, before doing this, I was working on the fifth canto. I want to make a summary of it, so I will continue. No, no, now I have to do something. Uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe uh, uh, more in the evening I will uh, do it. I thank you very much. Shila Baba Bhada Gije! Thank you.
Ich mache auf Stumm, oder was? Okay. So, was sage ich jetzt noch? Everybody, thank you very much, everybody, for taking part. We will make now, uh, continue our celebration here. And uh, so, packing the program on online is finished. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Krishna.